Welcome back, you beautiful people. This is Ask GMBN, where we get to answer all those beautiful questions that you've been leaving in the comments section down below. They're not always beautiful. No, they're not. Some of them are really horrible, actually. <laughs> like, why you, we won't repeat what they say. And we try to answer them. We don't always. We don't know everything. No. Do we? No. No, no. No, we don't. No. Uh, here we go, though. Uh, start with one from Toloi Karapin Monsang. Interesting, eh? No. What's up, guys? Hey, what's up? The uh, scene. <laughs> What type of riding characteristics should I expect when switching from a 100mm fork down to an 80mm drop? Well, there's, there's a lot. It's going to bring down the frame. It's going to bring down your whole riding position right over the front. It's going to lower it. It's going to be good for climbing. Steep head angle. It's going to be a steeper head angle. Could hurt your wrist a bit more. Yeah. Because uh, the weight's going to be tipped forward. All the way forward, yeah. Um, yeah, it depends what you want to do. If you're riding some big climbs and you're maybe feeling like front wheel's coming up, yeah. mm -hmm. but you could always put a longer stem on to keep the fork travel. Because yeah, yeah. fork travel, obviously, when it gets rougher, it's going to be yeah. a bit better, having a bit more. Longer stem, you could uh, get the stems that bring it up slightly. Could, well, you could keep your 100mm fork and stick a negative vice stem if you wanted to. I think that would eat, I think that's a good option, Neil. Lots of different things to Keep do, the suspension travel because it might come in handy. Next question is coming from G Millway. This is quite a long one. It's quite involved, he's saying. Oh, yeah. My local trails are Ed Edmont. Would have probably fall in the category umbrella of XC. I'm wondering what tips you can offer to maintain and gain speed where you have substantial climbs after short of short downhill tracks. Basically, he's wondering if you can optimize his wattage, optimize his, um, his speed. Um, well, if you've got, for you. if you've got, uh, what was it? You've got sustained climbs after short downhill sections. Mm -hmm. So you basically climb a lot. I mean, I don't know if you're talking about trying to get through those sections fast. Sometimes you can go too fast and like bottom out and risk puncturing. Yeah, yeah. You definitely see it in the cross country races where they're always about trying to keep average speed up. So just trying to hit the bottom of that climb as fast as you can to carry speed up it, mm -hmm. but it can be risky. So. Yeah, it's hard to ask. It's a hard one, that one. It's a hard, we, you know, it's a hard one. Um, where can I save those precious few watts on rides where I want to keep the intensity high, but I'm faced with loads of climbing? I guess it's carrying, but it's skills really to carry the speed, so you don't have to use the extra watts to get back up. To speed. Pumping. Yeah, so pumping, keeping light over technical sections, so you just keep the average speed up. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jace.xe. Hi. Is there a helmet that's convertible that you can use for downhill and also just casual? and enduro riding that you recommend or use. I want to get a helmet, but I don't want to waste my money. Oh, there's a few products out there that do offer this sort of thing. Giro. It's so those sort of convertible where the, yeah, they look so like you can take the, take the chin piece off. Yeah, we've got a list here. Lea, uh, Giro Switchblade, Met Parachute, Bell Super DH. They've all sort of changed and updated over yeah, the yeah. years. Uh, we run POC helmets. They don't have one of these convertible type ones. They just have, their Coron Air, it's called. So it's yeah. the full face Daniel helmet, but it's a much lighter version. Super light, breathable. With, yeah, with loads of ventilation in it. So, but you don't get rid of the chin bar with that one. So I use that for more enduro riding. Probably wouldn't use it on mm. on cross country mm. slash enduro slash everything. So yeah, it's sort of one of those things. I don't know. You do see lots of people running these convertible helmets. I do. I've seen them tuck them in their backpacks. Like yeah, their chin guards are there. Then when they get to a descent, they're like, oh, I feel a little bit safer if I put this on. But you've got to have somewhere to carry it. That's the only thing. Uh, here is some Eurobike tech. This is the Bell Super Air R helmet. It's a brand new helmet from Bell with a whole bunch of cool and interesting features that might be good for you guys out there looking for additional safety when you're out riding on the trails and you want some full face protection. Now it has a removable jaw guard on it. Now the idea of having a removable jaw guard is not necessarily something that's brand new. With the original version of the Super, it was fantastic. Jordan Bolton's got a question for us. I've just got my first full suspension bike. Congratulations, dude. Nice. Um, I'm looking to do some trails, medium jumps. The bike is a Nomad Fluid FS4. Shall I look at upgrading any parts before trying any jumps? Well, for a start, you've just got a brand new bike. Why would you upgrade anything? That looks, I think that's fine. It's a Norco Fluid. Uh, Sorry. Looks good. I mean, Oh, that's ready for jumps. Is that 29er? It looks like it's got a big width. Oh, yes. I think it looks available in each, 27 and 29. Yeah. Which doesn't make much difference, to be fair. No. Um, would you upgrade anything? I would say most bikes will be able to handle jumps as long yeah. as they're landing smooth. So yeah. even cross country bikes to a certain extent. Obviously, you can't get cross big. bikes. So yeah, make sure you can do the jumps nicely. That bike will be sweet. No, it's perfect. I wouldn't look into upgrading anything unless you unless something goes wrong or breaks. 
then yeah. maybe you start to look at upgrading you some parts. But a kind of similar question here from P Griffin, who's got a Trek Marlin 5 with upgraded forks, pedal stems, and added dropper, mm -hmm. and has the Tektro HD 27.5 hydraulic disc brakes. And they stopped me on a dime. I love them. I ride flat techie snowmobile or hiking trails where I average under 10 kilometers an hour, so mm -hmm. pretty steady. Mm -hmm. Would I notice any difference if I were to upgrade the brakes? Uh, what are the benefits of a more expensive brake set? And can I trust my entry level brakes to handle a few blue runs down the local lift assisted park? Well, okay. Blue runs, normal brakes, 100% can do it. Just fine. If you say you love them, Keep them. Keep them. I have some of the best brakes I've ever felt are those really cheap. They're not even Shimano Dior. I don't no, think they're Shimano. Shimano, Shimano. They, don't Shimano, Shimano, they Shimano. just feel great. Just entry level two, two pot brake. You're going to get more advanced brakes, lighter brakes, the more money you spend. Dual pot, like four yeah, pot brakes. Potentially more power. However, if you're saying you love the your brakes and they're stopping on a dime, yeah. I wouldn't be in a rush yeah. to upgrade them. No. Um, you know, if you do go to a big big hill, big descents, signs that your brakes are maybe not up to job, if maybe your road's a bit small, they'll start fading a bit, they're yeah. not gonna be as powerful, and the lever feel will go a little bit squashy probably, yeah. the bite point may move, and that's it's horrible. Where... I've been there, I've been there where my brakes are a little bit too small for the descending I'm doing. That Yeah, and that's sometimes around how you spec them, not necessarily how, uh, what's the word, how like good quality they are, no, yeah. it's just the size it's of the road. It's just the size of the road turn. The stopping power. Yeah. Right, question from Josh. It says, hey guys. Hi. Uh, I just bought a Yeti SB 5.5 because they're dirt cheap right now. Um, I was wondering how significant the difference between the geometry of my 2018 to the new Geos now. So the uh, SB 5.5, now there's an SB 150, it's a new model. Mm -hmm. So it pretty much follows what you would expect uh, everyone's doing basically. So the new bike is longer, so wheelbase, medium bike is now one, two, two, three, well, old 1167, so a okay. little, little, little bit different. Seat angle is now steeper at 73, and it is a, no, sort of 77, sorry, on the new bike, and it's slacker head angle, 64.5 compared to 66. That's quite significant on the head yeah. angle, two, de two degrees. So the new bike is longer, slacker, steeper seat angle. Old bike is the reverse. Yeah, eh, they're all getting that way. It is getting that way, but not to say the old bike isn't good. No. Different geometry, different, better different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, next question, Brock Thompson. What's the best way to get started with mountain biking, being really unfit and overweight? Just get out there. Exactly. Just get out there and ride. Don't push yourself for the first start because if you start to push yourself, you start to feel like this was the worst thing ever. Dare I recommend an e-bike? I actually, you could actually I honestly e think it would be good. Uh, it gets you out there a lot further and more than you would on a normal bike. I know, yeah, it, it's not cheating, whatever anyone will tell you. It's basically to get on a bike with a bit of assistance. I love it. Mm. I think it'd be great in that situation. If to be more fun, your average speed is now just going to get, you know, quicker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe worth a go. Try mm. one out. It is good. Mm hmm. Alan Burr, why do sealed drive bikes not exist? I've done, I've seen some research into how well this could work and it seems to be more efficient in muddy conditions. Sealed drive bikes? Um, this is the sort of like the gearbox in that's been going around forever. Gearboxes I know, we've talked about loads yeah, yeah. of times, they're just too inefficient, there's too yeah. much drag. Same I think with a sealed drive, so something like a shaft uh, driven bike. Yeah, that sounds like a headache. Well, it's going to be heavy, probably. Yeah. Uh, it's just not... I know rear max and cassettes get loads of stick, but yeah. it's, at the moment, it's still the lightest, most efficient way of doing it until someone comes up with a frippling genius idea. We've been talking about this for 20 years, probably, since I've been riding bikes. <laughs> and it's not <laughs> happened yet. It's not happened yet. <sighs> but electronic gears is happening. Huh? Bluetooth stuff. Ax SRAM axis, That's wireless. That's all super light. Tears, still rear max, though. People don't like rear max. Mm. I like my rear mic. Yeah, it's fine by me. Um, Sunil Bazu Matari. I have myopia, so is it okay to ride trails wearing spectacles? Yeah, yes. That, that's nearsightedness, if you didn't know. I didn't know, actually. Spectacles but, means nearsightedness? No, then myopia means he's got near, so he can't see far things. Ah, oh, I was thinking that was a bike brand. I was like, whoa, you're riding that? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. 
<laughs> no, it is 100% fun. Like, why would you not want to wear your spectacles whilst riding? Because if you don't know what you're going to see, you're going to crash. You can get, um, what's it called? Uh, prescription lenses. Prescription lenses, you For can. certain brands of glasses. Yeah, yeah. You can also get goals that work with glass underneath. Mm -hmm. you, contact lenses might be the best yep. way of doing it. And then wearing, I know everyone I know who wears contact lenses has to pretty much always wear riding glasses. Yeah, yeah. Clear. Imagine getting dust inside underneath those yeah. contact lenses. Oh, a scratchy, not scratchy. Yeah. Martin, Mr. Ashton, he wears glasses whilst riding. Yeah. Yeah. He said if you can see better. It's, it's inevitable, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Don't worry about it. Wan how? I hope I've pronounced that right for him. I have a fat bike and the and the tire is flat because of a nail. Can I use a repair kit to repair my fat bike energy? There's one for your fat man over here. <laughs> fat bike man over here. <laughs> yes, you can. Um if it's a big hole in your tube, you can use <laughs> a, a tube this big. <laughs> It's uh, like a patch. motorbike sized tire, it's yeah. inner tube is massive, but you can. If it's a big hole, um, you can put in a plug. You could plug that hole and then put an inner tube back in. In your tire? In your yes. tire. So if you've bigger hole in your tire, it's a big hole, take the screw out, plug it, put an inner tube back in, yeah. bump it back up. Fat bike tires are expensive. Fat bike tires are expensive, that's why you would, you would want to plug it. Yeah. Or you can put a patch inside just to stop the inner tube from pushing through that little hole in the tire. You can even, I've seen see people stitch them back together. Oh, yeah, I've seen that, yeah. If you've got big slices, stitch it together. Yeah. It saves you pennies. Get yourself lots of tubers for packets. Actually, it wouldn't save you pennies. It would <laughs> save you... Pounds. Pounds. Time for correct me if I'm wrong. You're we've, correct, Neil. I am correct. No, I'm not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, we've got a video sent in via the uploader by Ethan in upstate New York. Keep doing this. If you want us to check out your videos, give you any skills, tips, then mm -hmm. do that. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'll help you out. This is Ethan doing some sweet trials moves. <laughs> trials gurus right now, Neil. Well, watch this. This is better than I can do it. So I'm keeping my mouth shut. That was sweet. Actually, that was pretty good. So like that, what, I don't know what you call that. What do you call that? Might I tell you? It's like that that's, a, that's like a back hop to... I mean, I literally can't give you any advice because I think that's wicked. No, I think that's really good. Look at his stance whilst he's just about pull up onto that log. Boom. He's on. Nice. Shrunk his knees in. Straight onto the rear wheel. Straight onto the rear and wheel. And then that half crank. And then a little off. half crank off. Love it. That is perfect. I think Mr. Ashton will be very proud of you, mate. Ethan, well done. Uh, there's nothing I could say. Uh, Maybe put another one in front. Actually, uh, put Ethan a says that he watched the Trials Academy and was inspired. So that, that's what we were doing. Yeah. Is there any special techniques to get a massive rear wheel hop or should I just go to the gym more often? Massive rear wheel hop. Just preload, sink it in and just fire like a firework straight up. It is Same like, technique though, it's more power. More power. Mm -hmm. Gym's gonna help probably. Gym's gonna definitely help. More yep. power. But more power. Thanks very much. Keep sending us your questions. Well, fill in them in the comments down below and we'll try and help you out next week. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, definitely yes, send them in. Send them in to our uploader. It's down there in the description down below. Don't forget to hit that globe to subscribe because you're missing out on some rad stuff. If you want to see a video where Blake rides a fat bike, I ride a normal bike, uh, we go bikepacking over there. Over there one. Thumbs. See ya.